All right. So despite the fact that there's a ton of discussion in the cloud computing world about what clouds are, there are really only two definitions of clouds. And that might sound controversial, but there really are only two, and I'm going to tell you what they are. Um, the first definition of clouds is clouds are a bag of technology. There's a bunch of things in that bag, and if, that, if, your, if your application is running on those things, it's running on a cloud. Um, so you have to, to understand this, you have to understand how we got to this technology. Once upon a time, the personal computer um, changed the way mainframe computing worked. And all of a sudden, everybody could have a device on their desk. And then we had web-based computing, where browsers meant you had a common interface and you could get to information that wasn't at your desk. And everyone kind of knew what a hyperlink was. And then we got mobility, which causes people to do all kinds of unsafe things. Um, and mobility uh, is yet another change to computing. And now we have this idea of cloud computing that's coming along and shifting things. Cloud computing is an outgrowth of a bunch of different technologies. The first one's called virtualization. If you went into an office circa 1995, you would find a whole bunch of idle machines. There'd be, remember we used to have a computer next to every printer? That was the print server. And 99.9% .9 of the time, that machine was picking its virtual nose. It wasn't doing anything. It was just sitting there wasting power, wasting storage, wasting cooling. So IT said, wouldn't it be great if instead of having this dedicated machine that's idle and isn't doing much, and this other dedicated machine for mail that's idle, and so on, we could put a bunch of virtual machines into one machine, and to use a bad analogy, that's kind of like filling up the cup for a trifle. You have lots of different layers of applications. These are called virtual machines or workloads running on one physical machine. And IT tasted it and found it was good. At first, they did it for the print servers. Then they started doing it for things like QA and testing. And eventually, they said, this is pretty good for everything. Let's build virtualized everything, because it allows us to move things around much more easily and to be much more efficient about our computers. We're not buying a computer every time we have one line of work to do. The thing about virtual machines is that by bundling up a physical computer into what is essentially a file, you make it portable. Um, now, everybody here has hibernated a computer at some point. When you hibernate your computer, just your desktop, it takes what you're working on and it pauses it. And then it saves it to disk so that when you start up the next time, it loads it from disk and lo and behold, you're right where you were, right? That's all you need to know about a virtual machine. It's simply a machine that you pause it, and it turns into a file. And then you can start it again, and it turns into a machine again. That's what virtual machines are. And so I can have four or five of these virtual machines, and I can pause them, and I can move them around. I can take a print server that's on machine A, and I can pause it, move it over to machine B. So all of a sudden, I can copy and drag and move around machines, which means that the second technology in that bag of technologies is portability which is a characteristic of virtual machines. Because they're portable, I'm also making them ephemeral. I can pause them, I can start them up, I can kill them, I can delete them, I can copy them, I can manipulate them in lots of ways. And because I can manipulate them in lots of ways, I quickly lose control. Because when I gotta copy 100 machines, I don't wanna copy them one at a time, I'm going to automate the process. So I write scripts that say, here's a script that will copy all my machines, or here's a script that will delete all my machines, or here's a script that will go through and put a capital letter in the name of each of my machines. This is called automation. It's a natural outgrowth of having a lot of virtual machines that are moving around that are ephemeral. Well, guess what? Once you've got automation, you may as well have self-service. Because if someone calls IT and says, can I have a new machine? And you go, sure. And you click a button that says, please give me a new machine. And you call the guy and say, I'm done. It's a huge waste of time. Why not give that person the button? So now you have self-service. That's the cloudy technology definition. It's a bunch of technologies, you put them in a bag, you have this elastic computing that's sort of virtualized and automated and self-service and move, move aroundable. That's the technology definition of cloud computing. That virtualization has divorced this application from the machine. So in this case, I got a virtual machine that may be running on many physical machines, or I have a physical machine that could be running on many, could be running many virtual machines in it, but there's no longer a relationship between the hardware and the logical workload that I'm doing. So that's the technical definition of cloud computing. I said there are two. That's the first one. And this is the definition that anybody who's selling hardware or anybody who wants to go and sell something to an existing IT person is going to tell you exists. If I want to sell you cloud computing, this is what's called a private cloud.